Thank you. Um, thank you, Perry, for a for a great um, delivery on what is becoming a religion for a lot of us. And it's great to see like-minded colleagues um, at the forefront of this, you and Narendra uh, in your own fields. I would love to see that dialogue happen with dental schools, both in Melbourne and Sydney. So we'll wait for a day when you're invited to the faculty to start talking about this subject. But in the meantime, do you also see gastric issues? Because with the lifelong heaving and breathing, often the esophageal sphincter, which um, is having a huge load on it, relaxes. We see bruxing as a sign of not just mechanical abrasion, but a chemo-mechanical abrasion, which comes from lower pHs in the mouth. When we test saliva, we don't see it, but this is possibly a nocturnal event where there is more acidic vapor in the mouth or perhaps greater acidity. And it is that combination that can actually damage teeth. We can put a high-speed burr at 40,000 revs on a tooth and barely cause a scratch. So there has to be that. So how much are we involving a gastro evaluation? Could um, I ask both of you, please? Well, two things. Firstly, thanks for your comments. And I think that it's, it's high time that we are more collaborative, which is one of the reasons why Simon has got Narinda and I here. I think um, it's, it's a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've tried with some of my colleagues to to get um, more collaboration going and um, they just don't want to listen. You know, they're stuck in the ways that they were taught um, and their peers and their, and their teachers. So it's a, it's, a slow, it's a slow process, but I think that if we look, if we see how much dental orthotropic treatment has changed in the past 15 to 20 years, I think it will follow. It's, everything's in its slipstream. They'll see the results. and. Um, you know, the, what did Einstein say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Your, your, your question fits in to my idea of, um, of balance and equipoise in the world. So basically, I look at the world in terms of this big Venn diagram, okay? And we're talking about it last night that, you know, you've got your family and your friends and your profession and your interests and your health all coming together and you want to have this balanced life because that's what gives us nourishment um, emotionally and psychologically. If you nut that down into what we do professionally, there's also Venn diagrams all overlapping. So, you know, what I didn't mention um, really uh, much today was, for instance, in very early childhood, um, kids get a lot of ear infections. And of course, big adenoids have a, a, the principal problem of blockage and reinfection that it causes eustachian tube dysfunction and middle ear problems, okay? If you look at our indigenous population, I think the stat is that something like 90% of, of indigenous kids at the age of two have got some sort of abnormality of their eardrum or have had some sort of major middle ear event if not ongoing, okay? So they're already, it's already significantly problematic before they even get to preschool, okay? So if you look at things in combination, okay, just as adenoids affect ears, airway affects mouth and it affects facial shape. Um, if you look at pH alone, well, we know that dental exposure for mouth breathing gives you a lower pH. We also know that if you mouth breathe, you're going to get aerophagia, aren't you? You get gastric distension. You get all these GI things. I mean, when I was growing up, who knew about celiac disease? All right? Who knew? All we had was people labelled as irritable bowel. No one knew about lactose deficiency um, and, uh, and, and gluten intolerance. Okay? So if you've got problems in one part of your body, often there's this, and, I, and, I, and again, I, I can't say anything with abject scientific validation other than to say 
that there is a sympathetic response that occurs throughout our body, okay? We are all in some degree of homeostasis, okay? So that if we know if we don't sleep well for a couple of nights, we're cranky as, all right? If we eat poorly, our energy levels are down, okay? The way I, I explain it to people is that if you've got a rubbish bin full of rotten fish, okay, you can pour a bit of debt hole on that. You can pour a bit of pinecline on that to, to, to nullify the smell, but that smell is still going to be percolating around the house. We have this concept of sympathetic effusions. If you get a subphrenic abscess, okay, you're going to have a pleural effusion as well because there's regional effects that affect every part of the body. Okay, And what could affect you more than oxygenation, the lifeblood of what's keeping us alive? Okay, and so I think the GI system just follows that. You know, if you've got, if you're overweight, if your diet is poor, if you're eating late, if you're getting gastric distension, okay, is that more likely to give you GI reflux? Absolutely. Do we know the GI reflux affects teeth adversely? Absolutely. Is again, is it all overlapped in that Venn diagram? I think so. So I think it's up to you to tease out what you think are the pertinent issues. Again, you've got to be, when I, in fact, my very first week that I was in clinical school, the Dean of Medicine said, I want to train you as medical detectives. I want you to be getting all the information, having your suspicions to work out what you think is going on. And so you are dental detectives, okay? But more than being just focused on the teeth, you're looking at things holistically. And I think that is the, that has been the, 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 the huge um, boon in, in, in what, we, what we're doing is that, again, we're doing the unknown knowns. We're, we're, we're trying to be collaborative. We're trying to turn this into an orchestra, not someone just playing verse violin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's finish. So, look, it's a it's a great question. Essentially, the the question is is does nasal obstruction lead to reflux of gastric contents, whether they be acid, pepsin, or some other component? So, I actually looked at the literature, and there's very little um, on this subject. So, I started an investigation myself, and um, and what we did is um, the the theory being that when you're when you have a blocked nose, it's quite likely that then you're Increasing respiratory effort, particularly at night, uh, which then may lead to negative pressure in the in the thoracic cavity and the esophagus, which then may lead to overcoming the upper esophageal sphincter, resulting in laryngopharyngeal and even dental reflux. So, step one of that answering that research question was um, we looked at a few hundred people in a hospital undergoing septoplasty and a unrelated surgery arthroscopy and we demonstrated that the people undergoing septoplasty had a far higher incidence of of um, usage of ppis so that was step one next we were going to do um, we were going to actually test people undergoing septoplasty with um, with a ph probe uh, and see if that decreased post-surgery unfortunately i couldn't get a phd student to, for that particular study because we're doing so many interesting artificial intelligence and cfd studies that they all want to do that now but if anyone has a student who's interested, we've got the study all lined up. We've got initial ethics. So uh, it can be a dental student, anyone who's anyone who wants to do a PhD. There's at least five or six papers in, in, that, in that exact question. It's a great one. It's very, very perceptive. Exactly. Everything, everything is related. No one, no one is an island to themselves. And again, it goes back to integrative meetings, collaboration, and trying to get the best possible ingredients that is going to work holistically for that patient. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So, I mean, again, we come back to my concept of neighboring sets, right? Like a cardiothoracic surgeon would never just work on lungs without considering the heart or heart without considering the lungs. We would never think about the mandible without the maxilla? Why would we think about the mouth without the nose and the throat? I mean, we, we, we subspecialize, but it's all artificial separation. You know, we, we're not made 
in utero with different building blocks. It's it's all they're they're all the, the right components that hopefully amazingly just come together, but they're all interrelated. So um uh and you, you're lucky that I guess in in dentistry you've got all these subspecial subspecialists that you can also defer to uh to nut down to different problems. And and I think that um if you're a general dentist, and Simon said that most of you are general dentists venturing into this field or, you know, very, very, or, or further down the track, um, yeah, do the, do the cases that you think are going to do well and then build up your experience and then go from, from there, but get the right ingredients, um, collaborate, um, have a good team around you and um, you'll be on your journey. Absolutely. So if you're in Melbourne, work with Perry. If you're in Sydney, work with Narinda because we need that umbrella of primary care, right? All above all else, it's primary care first, vital function. And these are the specialists who deal with vital function. We're just tooth doctors. You know, we come second tier after they've done their thing. And my dad calls me, he, should, he says, don't get too ahead of yourself, son. You're an airway plumber. You're, you're an airway, airway trading. So, uh, so that's all I am as well. So, uh, so you know, we are, we are just mere yeah, we're practitioners. Right? Exactly, right. exactly. Right. Thank you, Mr. Perry Buster. Thank you, Professor Narendra Singh. Thank you all. Thank you, Perry. Thank you, Professor Singh. And that ends this section.